For this video, we'll be discussing thermal wind balance in a rotating tank created for the Atmospheric and Oceanic Sciences Department at the University of California, Los Angeles. This video was created for AOS 103, which is an upper division undergrad course. This class was taught in the fall of 2020 by Andrew Stewart, Jordan Moscoso, and Clara C. This video also assumes knowledge of geostrophic and hydrostatic balance. If you're unfamiliar with these concepts, I encourage you to pause this video right now Check out the two videos I have in the notes and come back once you're finished. But if you're ready to get going, we'll start by going through the materials that we need for this experiment. So here's a list of materials that we'll need for the experiment. One rotating tank. This tank is the HT2. We'll need some food coloring, some pipettes, an empty can, and some ice so that we can create a temperature gradient within the tank. Now that we have all the materials, we'll set up the experiment. The tank is now filled with room temperature water so that it reaches a depth of about 10 centimeters. To achieve a good visualization of thermal wind balance, this tank needs to rotate very slowly, about one rotation per minute, which means we need to wait for it to spin up for about 30 minutes. After spin up, we can add some ice to the empty can in the center of the tank. This gives us a cold interior and establishes the temperature gradient needed to show thermal wind balance. Initially, we have cold water surrounding the can. But after a short amount of time, we actually have a cold cone of water surrounding the can due to the sinking and spreading of cold water that's near the can. To complete the circulation, we actually need a return flow at the surface, so inward motion of warm water, and some upwelling along the edges to adhere to mass conservation. So now that we've seen the overturning circulation inside the tank, we can focus a little bit more on the radial flow. At this point, we can now see what happens with thermal wind balance or thermal wind shear. I've added the equation for thermal wind balance up on the right side of the screen. Note that thermal wind balance is actually a vector valued equation, however, I'm only showing the y component. This equation allows us to understand vertical shear and geostrophic flow with horizontal changes in density. You are able to come to this equation by taking both the equations of hydrostatic and geostrophic balance and combining them via a vertical derivative in geostrophic balance. I won't be showing this derivation because we want to focus more on the shape of the thermal wind shear instead of the actual arrival at the equations. For this experiment, we have clockwise rotation in the tank, or southern hemisphere rotation. The combination of the cold and warm water shown here, where cold water is toward the interior and warm water is toward the exterior, means that there is a low pressure toward the can and higher pressure toward the outside of the tank, or away from the can. This difference in temperature at the surface allows us to say that there is a pressure gradient pointing from high pressure or high temperature toward lower pressure or lower temperature toward the can. As a result, we have geostrophic flow 90 degrees to the left of the pressure gradient and out of the page. This is denoted by a circle and a dot in the middle, like you're looking into the head of an arrow. From here, we can use the thermal wind equations to find that the geostrophic velocity actually decreases in magnitude with depth. Eventually, there's a level of no flow, and then a return flow that goes into the page at the very bottom of the tank. To visualize this in a little bit more of a three-dimensional setting, we actually expect to see a flow that looks like it's wrapping around the can. Now that we've gone through and set up the experiment and talked a little bit about our expectations, let's take a look at the experiment. I start this video by adding a little bit of red dye to the surface. Note that this video is sped up about four times the normal recording speed. It actually is pretty difficult to show thermal wind balance in a rotating tank because of a lot of instabilities that have to do with tilted density surfaces. So now I'm going to add a little bit of green dye so hopefully it's a little bit darker and you're able to see the thermal wind shear a little bit better. So I'll pause the video here and I've added a couple arrows to show you the direction of the thermal wind shear. Note that at the surface, the flow is going toward the left, wrapping upward around the can. This has to do with the flow being strongest about the surface. And toward the bottom, the flow is going to the right, with strongest flow around the bottom. This is a great example of thermal wind shear. Now I'll play the rest of the experiment. I'll slow it down to about two times the recording rate, unless you watch the flow develop. So 
So this ends the video portion of this experiment. This video, voiceover, and all associated art were created by me, Jordan Moscoso, with experimental advising by Andrew Stewart and John Arnault. A huge thank you to the design and fabrication team, which consists of John Arnault, Henry Gonzalez, and Taylor Lawner. The funding for this tank was provided by the UCLA Center for the Advancement of Teaching. A huge thank you to the UCLA Marine Operations for giving us some space to conduct this experiment. And finally, a special thank you to the DIY Dynamics team. If you're interested in getting a rotating tank for yourself or your classroom, please visit our website listed above or follow us on Twitter at DIY Dynamics team. Thanks for watching.